paper on this bitch, but he ain't playing. If you ain't talking numbers, nigga, keep me out your mix. Cause I've been on the come up like I'm trying to hit a leak, nigga. I come from the gutter where they rapping up them bricks, and all I know is hustle, stack that money till I'm rich, and I'm not with that talking, all that mouth and get you zipped, then. Make Molly Young and roll you off for all that this, and. The GOAT, Playboy. I've been trying to make sure we get the Playboy interview. He's been requested in the comments mad times. Of course. Really? No, I swear. Yeah, I swear. We'll pop him up. Uh, of course, you always on the move. So first person to do the full interview live from the car. But like I said, been requested. I feel like I feel like I'm excited to do the Playboy one for sure because like you have such a like so well rounded as far as like going up as a producer as well as going up as an artist as far as starting as an artist starting as a producer going through a lot of really good stuff going through a lot of bullshit at the same time so i feel like just a ton of stuff and like it'll really be good and like for up and coming producers to get a lot of insight from you you know what i'm saying most yeah. definitely um but hell yeah, the producer room powered by producer culture. Like I said, the big goat, Playboy XO in the building. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm cool. Where are you at right now? I'm in Houston right now. Houston, what do you got going on there? Man, I'm with, uh, I'm just out here. With my, uh, my homeboy, he out here shooting videos. One thing about Playboy, always having big motion, but um, nah, bro. I mean, everybody was kind of like watching you now, whatever. You've also, it's been a lot of other producers that we've interviewed that have kind of like name dropped you as like the way that they got their first placement off of like a collab from you or uh, sending loops to you back in the day or whatever, but definitely been doing it for a minute. I mean, when like, how did you first start producing and like, or how did you first start doing music for real? And then when did it kind of like start clicking and going up? Um, I started, I started making beats in like fifth grade. Uh, I was making them on Mixcraft. I just ended up going to my grandma's house and she had a computer and it came with Mixcraft already on there. So I just started making beats on there. I thought I was making beats. I was using the loops, just putting them together. But then... My older cousin, he came and saw me making beats on Mixcraft, and he was like, man, you got to start using Fruity Loops. So I started using Fruity Loops. And ever since then, I've been going up. Crazy. Um, When you first started, did you start making, like, songs yourself first, or was it always just beats first? All right. I, wanted to, I always wanted to rap, but it's like I go on YouTube and look for beats, but I only... You know what I'm saying? I couldn't find the beats that I really liked, so I really just started making beats for myself. But I ain't never really jumped on a mic until 2018, 2019. Got it. But, like, I have, a, I have a set of headphones on in FL Studio, and then have a mic on there, and I, I just, like, listen to myself harmonize while I'm making a beat. Got so it. it's, like, I always had it in my head. I just never jumped on the mic. And that that probably, matter of fact, that probably helps you, especially someone early on, like learning to make beats, that probably helped you with that process too, because you could, you're making beats that are like able to have someone rap on it. You know what I mean? And it's, it got to, it's to the point to where it's like, I could make a hit. Like if I want to go in the studio and make a hit, I could do it. And it's, and it's like, when I work with other artists, I can give them a hit, even if they don't know how to make hits on their own. It's like I can do it myself, and just like I just, I guess it's just the sound. Like I just know what people want. It's really, it's like I study. It's, it feel like I studied a lot of shit. Like right? yeah, from the beats to the music to the the way people, you know. It's a lot. Like it's so much stuff. I just. I studied. It really helped me as an artist, though. It helped me as an artist a lot. But yeah, it really, it's just, I don't know. I'll, I'll just say, too, like, I believe it for sure, because uh, it's a lot of, like, people who do music that talk about how they know a hit when they hear it and they can make a hit or whatever, but, like, you've actually done it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you got Booted Up, which is a solo song yourself, no push except for yourself, just making it happen, going from place to place, making it happen. 
over a million views, probably really closer to 2 million when you add up all the pages. And even like your most recent song you just dropped last week, I want to say it's got like 40 K in like two, three days or something. So everything's like the the proof is in the pudding. You know what I mean? It's not like you just kind of like talking about how you kind of enjoy doing this for fun. Like you really have emotion with it. Um, As far as producing, especially kind of in the earlier days, when did like you start actually like working with artists and like getting like placements on your beats and stuff? I didn't get my first placement until 2017, 18 with Youngboy and that was Genie. Got it. Yeah, and Genie obviously a huge song. Like uh, I want to say it's got like eight figures on YouTube going crazy. How did you guys even link up in the first place? Uh, how I got to Youngboy. The first time I met Young Boy, I gave him, oh, I met him at a studio. I met him at Good Studio, and I gave him a hard drive with Genie on it. And he threw it. He threw the whole hard drive. What do you mean he threw it? Like, he threw it across the street. <laughs> he threw it across the street? Yeah. And then, like, a couple of weeks later, uh, what's his name? You know Ripple? Vintage yeah, yeah. Ripper. Vintage Ripper. Shout out the Ripper cat. Shout out Ripper. Yeah, Ripper. He uh, he was he was uh record. He like he an engineer too in BR. He was engineering uh some of Young Boy's mutual friends, and basically, I guess he just got tired of like he never. I ain't gonna. He never. He not. He don't really want to be an engineer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He just know how to do it. So he ended up sending them to Chris James, and at the time I was living with Chris James. And Chris James didn't want to record the artist either. He just let me do it. The artist, he just couldn't. He wasn't like, this was like his first time being in the studio. So it took him a long time to record. And Chris ain't really had a patience. So Chris was like, shit, you need to learn how to record anyway. So I'm just let you record him. And basically, I was recording him for like two, three weeks. And then they ended up bringing OG33 in there. And then once he came, he brought the rest of the NBA crew, and that's when Young Boy came and shit. The first day Young Boy came, Chris gave him the, uh, the Genie beat. They shot the video, crazy. and ever ever since then it's been yeah. So, then it's crazy because my first my first plat my uh my first placement went plat platinum. Yeah, very first placement went platinum. I don't <laughs> think there's too many people that can say that. It was no before that it was no like like little artists in the area that you had a song with or anything like that that was really straight the first song no nah, so my first song i ever made that i had got a little buzz off of was uh, a song called too lit it's, it's actually by chris james mm-hmm. and that was like the biggest song i had it had like 100,000 2000 i mean 200,000 views at the time that was a lot at that time but about a year later young boy came through and made the genie yeah, shit, that's really, that was really it. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I actually, I, I, I never knew for sure, but you actually like engineered a little bit too. So you just kind of got thrown into it back then. Yeah, like, I, 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 I don't like engineering at all. Yeah, how, like, did you know what you were doing? Like, how did you even know what to do when you just got thrown into it? Chris James, like, I learned everything from Chris James. Chris James had everything set up. Don't hit the engine like that. Chris James had everything set up to where all you had to do was just click the button, click record, and it just sound good. Oh, got it. What about, um? I mean, I guess kind of where does it progress from there? So, like, Genie comes out. At that point, are you able to just kind of have a direct line to send beats and just more stuff starts dropping, or how does it kind of progress from there? Nah, so actually, like, I'm going to be honest. This, this, the, this is the whole story right here. This is where she's going to get crazy. Yeah. So, basically... I made the beat for Young Boy, and it's like I talked to uh, his A and R for the first time. So basically, he just sold me a drink. He like, yeah, uh, we're gonna give you like thirty five hundred, and we're gonna send it to your PayPal. I'm thinking they're gonna send it to the PayPal. The whole time, it's, it's a whole different process. You gotta get a lawyer to read the contract. Yeah, you gotta send invoices and stuff. Yeah, I ended up waiting like damn near a whole year before I got the check for Genie. So um during that time I had ended up making beats for like Fredo, Young and Ace. Um who else I was making beats for? It was really like Fredo and Young and Ace and Young Boy. 
I didn't get another young boy placement till like six months later, but I know I had got at least like three, four uh, placements with Fred O'Bain. But I did the same process with them. I signed the contracts, waiting on the checks. I didn't get the checks till like a year later because I didn't know how to get them. So mm -hmm. basically, I ended up getting a lawyer. The lawyer ended up getting the checks for me. But he really finessed me. Basically, he had like the letter, uh, letter of direction going to him. So basically, I was getting like five thousand dollars a beat, but he was only sending me like a thousand. Mm -hmm. So the only reason why I didn't know that because he had the letter of direction. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I end up getting another lawyer. The lawyer read the contracts. He told me what was going on. So I start, uh He helped me get out the contract with them. I got in the contract with him. And he finessed me too. He ended up signing me to a pub deal and an artist deal. He represented me and the labels for the deals, which is a conflict of interest. For sure. Yeah, so it's like it's a bunch of shit that was going on. Like just everything went left. But I, I followed directions. Like I did with every I did everything everybody told me to do. Get a lawyer and you know, basically listen to him. And that everything I did send me down the wrong path yeah it's crazy too because this music shit is just so slimy sometimes like yeah. you did everything you were supposed to do like if it was a rule book you did every single rule right like and, and i actually had matter of fact it wasn't even the lawyer that did that at first it was so much shit that happened the lawyer did finesse me too but i had a management company and they had offered me like a pub deal from a label that was created by them Got it. So they was already getting like twenty. They was already getting twenty percent, and then they end up signing me for uh. They end up offering me a pub deal, but I had end up signing already to uh Royalty Network. Royalty Network, yeah, I remember that's when me and you first connected back long ago. We we're trying yeah. to work on something. Um, man, like, how do you like at times like that? especially when it feels like you're doing everything right and shit is still just going left. Like, like what did you do to just maintain? Like how, how did you stop yourself from just like going crazy and just throwing your laptop or just quitting altogether? Like I end up finding like, I had to learn the game. Like I ended up learning how to get, uh, my publishing money. Luckily I was, uh, I was generating enough money from young boy to be able to get out of these situations. So like I was getting like, $30,000 every pub check so that I had enough money to get a lawyer and fight certain uh, cases and stuff. What advice do you have for somebody who's seen it go south a bunch of times to all these up and coming producers who are looking for like a, a solid lawyer to go with to help them get paid and things like that? I feel like you need to go with a lawyer that has a lot of experience. Like see who he represented. Mm -hmm. I end up with a lawyer that represented uh Mike Will, the Neptunes, he got a lot of good relationships with other artists. So every, every time something come up, it's smooth. Like he helped me get out my deal real easy. Yeah. No, that, that that's a cheat code too, especially when you have a lawyer that uh, already has those relationships in place. Because if your lawyer doesn't know the person at the finance department at UMG or this place or that yeah. place, sometimes getting paid is a lot more tricky. I'm, and I, I had end up me. I mean, I end up having that same connection to those people too. Mm -hmm. So now I get my money a lot faster. Uh, it's easier for me to get placements. I haven't even produced, been producing in a minute though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm really on the artist side, but ever since I got that lawyer, everything been smooth. So like, I got myself out of all my deals beside my pub deal. I'm still in the pub deal, but my manners is gone. The label's gone. I'm all the way clean. Like, nobody. Yeah. Um, as far as, like, the artist side of things goes, like, when when do you actually start dropping dropping music yourself as an artist? Like, when does that time start? Uh, 2019. And what's Late the first 2019. song? And I started, dropping, uh, I started dropping music because I had a child on the way, and I was like, I got to find another way to get some money. Because I, I was spending all my money on getting all of these deals. And basically, I just, I went home and I just, I'm like, I got to make a hit song. I made the song and it went viral the next day. Yeah, the next day.
So that was the first song that you ever put out. Yeah, first song I put out went viral. Booted day. up. Yeah. Booted up was crazy. I still remember. Uh, obviously the video is crazy. You, everyone, go check it out. It's got millions of views. Um, yeah. it's posted on a lot of different places. But I remember before the song actually officially released, all these people like taking different snippets and putting it together to make their own version of the final song, which is crazy. That was blowing me too. But luckily, I had, I had everything under control. Yeah. I, I really, I feel, I feel like I. I feel like I failed with that song. Like, I feel like I didn't, I ain't blow about that song. I never had my big break. I thought I did. I just ain't had my shit together. Like, it got to the point to where the song got so high, it was time to take it to the next level. And I didn't have people in place to make, to help me take that song to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. That's what I always say, like, it's important to kind of have that team in place because regardless, a lot of it is always going to fall on the artist, songwriter, or producer. But if you have that team in place, they can amplify what you already have going on to try to help you get, get it to that next level. And on top of that, I wouldn't be an artist. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a bunch of shit I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do it like, I wouldn't carry myself the right way. It's a lot of shit. I, I just wasn't being an artist. Yeah. I just had a hot song. And like to this day, I still I be out and about. Nobody know that's me. Right. What about um? I'm sure that there was instances where people did know it was you and did know you were having motion with your own song, especially in different rooms or studio sessions or things like that. What's some of the big differences between like Playboy walking into a room and being the person who made a beat on a big song like Genie, and then when people looking at you as Playboy walking in the room, the person who made booted up in the song going crazy. Uh, see, well, I, people don't people like people really don't know me as Playboy the artist. They know me as Playboy the producer. People think all of my songs is Fredo Bang. They think you Fredo Bang. Yeah, they think every song I when they hear my song, they think it's Fredo, but it's really me. But as yeah. a producer, I can go any city, any studio, and just say my tag, and it's like the whole vibe of the studio change. Yeah. Like, people treat me like a legend. I don't feel like a legend, but everywhere I go, people are excited. Like a yeah. I I guess kind of <laughs> back to the producer side of things. What's uh, like what's what's the favorite song that you've made so far that you're the producer behind? Dead Trolls. Dead Trolls. Dead Trolls. Probably my favorite one. Oh. I, yeah, I, obviously a huge record on top. That's you, Carlton Banks, and London Blue. What's kind of like the story be- behind how that came together? I just had, I had ended up downloading, uh, no, I had ended up shooting some videos with Carlton Banks, and he ended up sending me, like, some blue packs. I never knew he made beats, mm-hmm. but he sent me some blue packs, and uh, what really made me make that beat? Oh, Rich Porter called me. And he was like, uh, he, YB needed some beats. So I just went to the loop pack and I just cooked some shit up. I never really asked you this before, but was your, like, did you ever have, like, an ego involved when, like, in the beginning, YB throws your hard drive of all the beats across the street? Did you ever feel like, nah, I'm not sending him any beats because of that? Or you always just kind of checked that to the side and, like, kept it moving work-wise? See, when he threw it, I'm like, shit. I'm like, when he hit them beats... He gonna, he gonna call back. Like, he gonna need me one day type shit. He gonna fuck with me one day. I just knew it. Like, at the time, I was feeling myself. I just felt like I was the best producer ever. So I just knew when he heard my beats, he was gonna fuck with my beats. But you were right, though. Say what? That you were right, though. Yeah. I knew. That's like I say, I be knowing when I'm finna make a hit. I knew. When he got on my beats, he was gonna make some beats for sure. Yeah. And I had gave him like my best beats at the time. Uh what's 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 next for Playboy? Like what do you got coming up next that you're excited about? You're focused on the artist side, you're gonna go back and focus on the producer side and more. What what's next that you're excited about? I started focusing on the artist side because if I drop songs as an artist, nine times out of ten, I at least made seventy five percent of the song. Yep. If I don't have a co producer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I have a co-producer on the beat, I own 75% of the song, but 
most times I be making my beats by myself, so I own 100. percent So basically, um, I owe my label like eight songs. They say eight songs, but it's really 16, 50 percent. Yeah. So I'm just like, shit. I might as well just turn up as an artist, sign to the label, and just turn in eight songs, and then I'll be out. Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, we did an interview with Done Deal not too long ago where we kind of touched on MDRC deals where there's like a minimum requirement you need to give the yeah. publisher. And that's another thing that can be tricky sometimes is sometimes they'll say you own 10 songs or something, but those 10 songs are out of 100%. 99% yeah. of the time, a producer who only makes beats and doesn't rap is never going to have 100% on a song, exactly. which means yeah. you don't owe 10 if they're all 50% you owe 20. And then the other thing is most oftentimes than not most producers, they don't have 50% on a lot of songs because they're getting placements because they send loops or they're using loops or whatever. Yeah. So if you owe 10 songs at hundred percent, but you mostly collab every single time. So you have 25% on a lot of these songs, you really owe 40, 25% to get you to the 10, Yeah, which is the craziest that's part. Gonna, that should take a long, that should take a lot of time. It uh, take a long time to get 40 placements. Yeah, and like nobody's having 40 placements in a year, really. Like and then it get and then sometimes some some sometimes they don't pick up certain songs. Yep. But you know, at the end of the day, they still pick up the song. Like they gonna collect from the song regardless. But I guess it just don't be I don't know how they go. I well don't know so, how they go. So basically a lot of the times the song has to be a like a major label release. And what happens with that is when it's not on an album, sometimes it doesn't count, but they still collect from it, but it doesn't count towards the requirement, the, the requiry, the, the delivery requirement that you're obligated to fulfill. I'm trying to see how it don't count if you're collecting on it though. Cause sometimes they like label it as it has to be like a, like an album cut. Oh, uh, all right, wait, I yeah. see, I see. Um, yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you too, did you start to notice pretty quickly some of the differences between the publishing money and then the master side money when you're dropping songs as an artist? Uh, I do. I'm not gonna lie. I, I do make more, way more money as an artist. Like when, when on my songs, like on my on the songs that I make, I make more money as a uh, on the mechanical side than the publishing side. Mm -hmm. I make ten thousand dollars every month on streaming, but like every three months when I get the publishing check, I probably make damn near thirty dollars on publishing from my songs. Yeah, like I don't know, I don't, I really don't know the difference to be honest. So the. The master side outweighs the publishing side by about five times. And if you only have 50% of the publishing on a song, you really have 50% of the 20%, which means you have 10% of the total. So that being said, a million, a million streams on your own song will probably get you something like $4,000 and you'll have that $4,000. But the publishing component of that $4,000 is about 20%. So that would be 800. And then if you only have 50%, you're going to make $400. So you're literally making one tenth sometimes. And that's why it's easy to, to run it up so much as Damn. if you can put up numbers like you can. Yeah. See, that's crazy. I didn't even know that. Yeah. It's crazy for sure. But um, what, uh, What's next for Playboy? Like, you got so, dropping? Yeah, uh, so basically, I'm going to be dropping them there every month. Mm -hmm. two, two videos every month. I'm trying to get... I'm really just trying to get a good situation because I got a lot of songs. I got a lot of big features I want to drop, but I don't want to drop it without the push and the engine behind it. So I'm really just trying to find my next situation. Definitely. There's a certain type of situation I want, too. It got to make sense. Definitely. Definitely um as far as like just people trying to make noise in the music scene whether they're an up-and-coming artist or a producer trying to figure out a way to get some placements like what's some advice you would have to a lot of these you know kids really trying to make it happen for a producer if you want to get some placements collab collab 
I think all my NBA songs are collabs besides one. And it's a, it's a lot of other it's a lot of other artists that I've been trying to make beats for, and I can't get no access to them. But I recently just got to ESTG through Trouble. I got the Roddy Rich through Tay Tay. So I feel like collabing is it. Once it. you locked in with the uh, once you get a placement, you locked in with the label. That's a fact. So yeah, I say collab. Hell yeah. Well, we appreciate it big time. The producer room, Power by Producer Culture. You got any any last minute things you want to get off your chest before we get out of here? Not really. My mind, see, if I was prepared for this interview, I would have had a lot of shit to say. We're going to do a part two. Don't worry. We'll do a part two. Uh, yeah, we'll do a part two. We'll do part a part two. two. I have way, way, yeah, way more stuff to say. Hell yeah, we'll do a part two when you're in the studio. But either way, a lot of really good information, especially coming up, dealing with labels, maneuvering through, trying to get paid. But Playboy XO, we appreciate a big time. The legend, the producer room, powered by producer culture. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, comment who you want to see next. We appreciate it big time.